decent work and economic growth category, it does spell some specific goals, and that is to, I'm going to read this, strengthen the capacity of domestic financial institutions to encourage and expand access to banking, insurance, and financial services for all. Now, following suit, all UN members have integrated this push for inclusive growth in the activities of their various agencies. And here in the Philippines, leading this charge is, of course, from the public sector, we have the Banco Central of Filipinas. Now, on the other hand, we also have the private sector. And as we know, we have Sabuana Luidier, which is the largest microfinancial institution in the country. Of course, they also have inclusive growth at the top of their hearts and in, in their very DNA and their tenets. So it's really no big surprise that they are hosting this kind of forum today. And today's goal, the only goal of this forum, is to make as much people as we can aware of the advocacy of inclusive growth, specifically, of course, financial inclusion, and to give everyone a sense of where we are on this as a country, or close to achieving it. Are we far? Are we on the road? Where are we on this road? Is the road even there? So we'll find all these out today, and we'll also find out how we can contribute to this promotion, to this cause, really. So in other words, all of us here today, we're all included and we're all part of you know, this promotion of financial inclusion here in the Philippines. And this forum has, of course, been prepared for a while, and we have invited different thought leaders as well as resource persons to spark the conversation that we ought to be having and to provide proper context for all our discussions today. So you see the lineup of our resource speakers, which I have. Trust me, it's pretty interesting. And I can definitely say for sure that it's going to be an extraordinarily informative afternoon for everybody. So leading the charges they sent from the private sector, and the host for today is Cebuana Luidier. To welcome us all to this afternoon's event, we call on the president of Cebuana Luidier Rural Bank, Mr. Dennis Valdez. Our esteemed guest of honor, Senator Francis Cheese Escudero, our erudite forum resource speakers, Ms. Pia Provantaya, a Director for Inclusive Finance and Policy Office, and concurrent head, Financial Consumer Protection Department of the Banco Central of Filipina, and Dr. Alvin Al, Professor of the Department of Economics and Director of the Ateneo Center for Economic Research and Development, our President and CEO of PJ Lumelier Group of Companies, John Henry Lumelier, our Senior Executive Vice President, Philip Andre Lumelier, the Board of Directors of the Cebuana Lumelier Rural Bank, the Cebuana Lumelier Management Team, dear media friends and valued guests, a pleasant and inclusive day to all of you. On behalf of the entire Cebuana Lumelier team, it is my honor to welcome all of you to this Financial Inclusion Forum. We at Cebuana Lumelier have always believed that every Filipino should have all the means necessary to be able to take control of their lives, most especially their finances. We believe in this not only because it is intrinsic in our business, but more importantly, we see the disparity and the disadvantages of those in the marginalized sector. However, we also see the potential the potential of every Filipino being empowered to make their lives better, wherein everyone has the same access and opportunity. We do believe that no one has to fall so that others may rise in order to achieve inclusivity. We can all grow together at different paces and in different races, but all run towards their own goals. That, for us, is what inclusive growth is all about. Now, imagine if all Filipinos would have the same mindset. With your country opening opportunities and offering a helping hand to those who truly need them. While it is the responsibility of our government to ensure that even the most basic definition of financial inclusion is delivered to the people, it is also important for the private sector to do its share in making this mission a reality. This is exactly why Cebuano Lumelier 
is spearheading this form. The road to financial inclusion is not paid by just a few. We need everyone to build a path that we will all journey on. As part of our advocacy and innate values that are grounded on inclusivity, we are holding this forum in the hope of shedding light on the need of our collective action to achieve financial inclusion. Because beyond discussing ideas, it is now imperative that we take tangible steps in realizing these ideas. We welcome you to this forum and to this advocacy. It is with exuberant hope that everyone in this room would be a catalyst for this initiative. Our collective efforts would finally break down the hindrances that keep many Filipinos unbanked and excluded, and thus paving a road wide enough for everyone to walk. I hope that we would have a very fruitful and inclusive session this afternoon. Thank you very much, Ma Kasubwan. Uh, thank you very much for your welcome remarks, Sir Dennis. Now, we always talk about financial inclusion, we always see that buzzword, but what does it really mean, right? I mean, we all have maybe our own definitions for this term, we have our own ideas on what it really means, but for the purposes of this forum, let's all try to align ourselves, and you know that term when you're writing your thesis paper or your essay paper called, let's define the term Spuna, let's do that first, right? So, we are very honored to have with us today a very, very esteemed guest to put into context this very topic of financial inclusion. Ladies and gentlemen, to deliver the, today's keynote speech, please allow me to welcome on stage the Chairman of the Senate Committee on Banks, Financial Institutions, and Currencies, Senator of the Republic of the Philippines, the Honorable Francis Escudero.
Pero kung titingnan din natin ang gatos of the loanable funds that banks and private banks have, despite and in spite of the passage of the agri agra law, which mandates a certain percentage, 10 and 15 percent respectively, to be loaned to the agriculture and agrarian reform sector, hindi pa rin at kulang pa rin napakayon na pera sa sektor na ito. Ayon sa datos per ng BSP na baka masigurang tapon ni PIA mamaya, 2.9 percent of loanable funds are earned to the agriculture sector, of the total share in the economy of the agriculture sector at 9 percent. Pumigit ko mulang, tatlong dana pitong pung bilyon ng credit gap na pinag-uusapan natin. Rason kung bakit ang sektor ng agrikultura ay hindi na mamayagpag sa ating bansa. Noong panahon ni Marcos, hindi ko sinasabi yun dahil kay Marcos dahil sa tatay ko, dahil yung tatay ko, Minister Marcos sa Agriculture Law. Noong panahon ni Marcos, meron tayo 1.1 million hectares ng irrigated ng lupa yung na tinatamdan ng bigas o ng palay. That was 33 years ago. 33 years ago, Vietnam and Thailand had less than 1 million hectares of irrigated land landed to Palay. Today, 33 years after, the Philippines stands at 1.3 million hectares of irrigated land, an increase of only 200,000 hectares in a span of 33 years. Thailand is at 9 million hectares today. Vietnam is at 11 million hectares today. Kaya huli tayo magtaya kung bakit ang Vietnam ang number one exporting country ng bigas at ang Pilipinas ang number one importing country naman ng bigas in spite and despite the fact that we are and still are an agricultural country compared to our ASEAN neighbors. Bakit importante ang inclusion? Napanggit kanina ng ating host na importante ang tulay ito para makamit ang pito sa labing pitong SDGs na Sustainable Development Goals. Hindi makakamit ang pito kung wala itong financial access o inclusion na tinatawag natin. Dagdag pa siguro dito. Gano'n katagal ba tayo maghihintay? Gano'n katagal ba bago natin makamit yung worldwide average man lang na 30% mula sa 70% na unbank? Buti na lang na-invento ang cellphone o ang mobile phone. Now we can actually leapfrog from where we are right now to digital financial inclusion. Ang nakakalungkot, sa buong mundo, of the 30% that are unbanked, 70% of them have mobile phones. Sa Pilipinas, ang bank penetration ay napakababa at nearly 30%. Pero ang penetration ng mobile phone, dahil karamihan ng tao, ewan ko kung bakit ako isa lang ang cellphone ko. Dalagalawa ang cellphone. Mobile phone penetration is at 110% in our country. Moving forward, what am I trying to say? We can actually leapfrog to doubling this figure of um, financial inclusion in a matter of two to three years. Moving forward, given the various applications and application of various technologies, we don't have to wait for a generation to achieve this. Moving forward, and dami ng pwedeng magamit ng mga teknolohiya at app. Kamilang na rito, halimbawa, ang branchless banking, crowdsourcing, blockchain, ang pagkakaroon ng Wi-Fi, peer-to-peer, village, village financing, marami ng paraan para magamit at mapasok ang ordinaryong mamamayan, partikular na sa sektor ng agrikultura, doon sa sektor ng bank at hindi lamang unbank or under bank. Malayo na rin na rin na rin ang ating Banco Central. Sa totoo lang, sa ating region, na una regulatory framework-wise ang Banco Central ng ating bansa sa pangunguna o sa ilalim ng administrasyon ni Pangulo Aquino Long, patungkol sa regulatory framework para ma-achieve ang mas mababang unbank statistics. Subalit, hindi nakasabay ang pribadong sektor sa pangunguna ng Banco Central nitong nagdaang anit na taon hanggang isang dekada. Para po sa akin, moving forward, ano ang mga dapat nating pagtuto ng pansin? Sa parte ng Senado ay ipasa na po namin ang bagong Central Bank Act o Amendment ng Central Bank Act. Ibig sabihin yun, mas malawak at malaki na ang kapangyarihan ng Banco Central Bank para gumawa ng mga regulasyon na yayakap sa mga pagbabago sa teknolohiya. Gayun din, natatanggap ng iba't ibang pamamaraan upang sa gayon matulunan ang pangangailangan ng iso ng financial inclusion. Mapapasa din namin bago matapos ang kongreso nito. Meron pa kami tatlong linggo sa dating na Mayo. Ang Sharia Banking Law 
na makakatulog din sa tinatawag nating financial inclusion. Ewan ko kung nalalaman ng ilan dito, subalit, ayon sa Islam at ayon sa Quran, hindi pwedeng magdeposito sa banko ang Muslim o ang riniwala sa Quran. Dahil tinuturing nilang kasalanan yun. Tinuturing kasalanan ang bumataw na in ng interes o magpataw ng interes. There are roughly 11 million Muslim Filipinos in the country. If half of them are adults, then you're talking of approximately at a population of 106 million, you're talking approximately of 5.2 million Filipinos that will immediately be back, quote-unquote, as opposed to unbanked kapag ka napasa ang panukalang batas na ito. Nasa ngayon, nasa mahapang panahon, lahat po at karamihan ng ating mga kapatid na Muslim sa ARMM o ngayon, Barna at Tawar, nakatagok yung kanilang pera literally sa ilalim ng kama, sa loob ng bahay, or in some form of value, again, hidden in their houses. Isang pamamaraan nito para na-increase ang financial inclusion dito sa ating bansa. Sa pagpasok ng digital age, bagaman nandun ang pagkakataon na maka-leapfrog tayo, nandun pa rin ang mga problema kaugnay sa signal, nandun pa rin ang problema kaugnay sa connectivity. Ang pagpasok at pag-aproba ng Senado at Kongreso ng Third Telco, sana magbigay daan tungo sa mas malawak na connectivity sa bawat sulok ng ating bansa at sana sa mga susunod na linggo, may makikita kayo mga hapang nagagawin ng pamahalan. Mabuksan na ang pitong submarine cable na nag-uugnay sa ating bansa sa labas ng Pilipinas. Alam ba nyo na pitong submarine cable natin pero ang ginagamit lamang ng dalawang telco natin ay dalawang submarine cable. Dahil yung limang submarine cable, meron silang kapartner doon. Yung tigisa nilang submarine cable na ginagamit, sila lamang ang mayroon kaya mas malaki ang kita. Kung bubuksan lamang nila yun. Kita pa rin naman, sa totoo lang, overnight, doon doble ang bilis ng internet sa ating bansa at makakalahate ang bayan. Nandun naman na nakalatag na kailangan lamang gamitin. In fact, the third telco, China Telecom, in Odena, will be constructing their eighth submarine cable na maglalating sa La Union. Pero abunin pa tayo ng mga isang taon bago mangyari at magawa yun. Pero nandiyan na nakalatag yung dagdag na lima na hindi ginagamit. By government fiat, this can be done. Because to my mind, this is part of national security and this should be opened up in the interest of the public and for the benefit as well of the public. Pangatlo, financial literacy. Meron na huglayan ng Banko Central at ng DepEd na huglayan sa pagtuturo sa ating mga kapatahan na nag-aaral ng elementary man ng high school kung paano mag-save sa banko, kaugnay ng ilang mga pamamaraan ng pag-ibibigyan at pag-imbak at pag-impok ng pera. Subalit, ultimo ang ating mga teacher may problema kaugnay sa financial literacy. Mahigit 60% ng ating mga guro bawal sa utang ngayon at hindi tila ito mariresolvahan sa malapit na ilang harap. Para sa akin, kailangan ng financial literacy para mapatunawa sa ating mga kababayan kung ano nga ba ang bentahe at papapakinabangan nila kung sila'y magkaroon ng account o mapasok sila sa tinatawag natin bank compared to being unbanked or underbanked. Ako yung nagpapasalamat um, sa inyong lahat ngayong hapon para sa pagkakaroon ng ganito po ng forum kung saan didiscuss natin ang microsavings ng Cebuana Lulia dahil tinutugo na natin ngayong hapon Ang dalawa sa pangunahin ng rason kung bakit unbank ang 70% ng ating mga nababayan. At ano yun? Una, wala daw silang savings. At dahil may minimum mga mga banko, mahirap mag-maintain ang average daily balance. Pangalawa, napakaraming requirement bago ka makapagpatayo o mag, 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 magkaroon ng bank account. Yung misis ko na lang mismo sinamahan ko sa banko para magtayo ng account at isa ay nabot ng 30 minutos sa dami ng ID at pinipila pa ng board. This would simplify a lot of things. And this is an agreement that the private sector should have done actually a long time ago to make it simpler and to make it easier for people to actually get an account as opposed to making it more difficult for them. Moving forward, the micro, the micro saving system of um, Cebuano Luguilar will actually even add more access points to nearly every municipality in the country. Moving forward pa rin, and I discussed this earlier, sana magkaroon ng pagkakataon na magkaroon ng linkages 
hindi lamang ang rural bank ito, kundi ang iba mga bago pa para access points sa iba't ibang financial services maging available sa bawat munisipyo at kung maaari pa nga sa pinakamalalaking barangay, lalo na sa kanayunan, sa labas ng Metro Manila, sa labas ng Calabarzon area, partikular sa kanayunan kung saan mahirap ang pananalapi at mahirap ang ganitong uri ng mga serviso. Layunin din dapat natin sa hapong ito. Tiyakin na hindi lang gawing accessible o available ang mga pasilidad na ito. Dapat magamit at gamitin din ito ng ating mga kababayan. It is not simply making it accessible that should be our goal. It is actual usage and availment that should be our goal. Dapat, pag nandiyan na, matulungan at mahigayat natin ang ating mga kababayan ang gamitin ito upang sa gayon ay magkaroon ng pagkakataon na magkaroon sila ng kapital na kinakailangan. Ulitin ko particular sa sektor ng agrikultura. Kanina nag-uusap kami ng John Henry, pinag-uusapan nila nila naman. Mas malaki ang kita sa pagdatari ng palay kaysa pagkakaroon ng Jollibee franchise. Kung meron lang tayong datos, kung meron lang tayong tiwala at gagamitan ng siyensya na mas malaki naman talaga ang balik ng negosyo, kung may tutorin natin negosyo ito, kumpara sa mga tradisyonal na negosyo, ang banko masaya na nga sa pito, walang porsyento eh. Kita na sila eh. Ano pa kaya ibabalik ang buho na mo sa loob ng isang taon? O may ROI ka na 50 o 100 percent? Tinigyan ko sa inyo, datos lamang marahil ang kailangan para patunayan ito at dapat magkaroon na mas maraming proof of concept. Mas malaki ang balik at kita sa sektor ng agrikultura kumpara pa rin sa ibang mga sektor. Ito ang tinayuan ng Thailand at Vietnam, ang bakbo nilang may tatawag, ang sektor ng agrikultura sa pag-unlad ng kanilang ekonomiya. Tayo, pilit natin umuunlad, pilit natin nagiging katulad ng mas mayayamang bansa na kinakalimutan ang tungtungan, ika nga o ang paa na dapat sana natin ginagamit para marating ang ating nais para wala. Hindi ko papahabahin ito dahil nalalaman ko mas maraming teknikal at magaling na magsasalita kaugnay sa paksang ito o para sa akin. Hayaan niyo nalaman iwanan ko kayo para mga mag-investor naman ako. Sa isang kasabihan din mula kay Confucius, aplikable man o hindi, kayo na ang magpasya. Ayon kay Confucius, In a country well governed, poverty is something to be ashamed of. In a country badly governed, wealth is something to be ashamed of. Kung maganda ang magpapatak po, ng ating bansa na kakahiyang magmahira. Pero kung pangit at hindi maayos sa pagpapaganda ng ating bansa, ang pagiging mayaman sa bansa niyan ang dapat ikahiya at nakakahiya. Sa muli, maraming salamat. Magandang